Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm making this video because I have good news. Uh, actually, good news for me and hopefully it will be good news for you as well. Um, you know, I can now do things that I was not able to do over the past because I, you know, we just didn't have the right tools to do it. Um, and that concerns the use of uh, control surface, you know, MIDI control surface uh, to use in conjunction with your DAWs to control parameters in your DAW or in, uh, in your uh, plugins. Um, it's now, with Cubase 12, it's pretty easy to customize control uh, surfaces, you know, with, with that version to just do simple commands. And of course, you can use Mackie compatible control surfaces to do the usual mix of tasks. For instance, if you, if you use, uh, like here, this is a, a Behringer uh, X-Touch, which is Mackie clone uh, control surface. Of course, I can, you know, if I look at my mixer, uh, here and here I can use the, the faders, you know, to control that and I can use the knobs here to control uh, the pan here and there. Okay, so, so you know, that's that's fine, but that, I wanted more than that. And, uh, you know, with the latest version of Cubase and a software language called Max, I was able to achieve that, uh, to control the parameters of... Um, of of my plugins of my pigments plugin here and here's how it works uh, you know there's the uh the control surface here uh, right this and then there is the software here which is kind of a programming language but it's it's not you know you don't have to make um to do some coding it's just uh, uh building blocks and arrows between the blocks to make things happen it is pretty smart stuff uh, it took me a few days to really uh, make it do what I wanted, but um, it's it's pretty powerful and, you know, can check. It's called Max MSP. And that software is right in the middle of the uh, control surface here and Cubase software. And in particular, the Cubase MIDI remote control uh, feature, which is new in Cubase 12. And that allows to control you know, all your VST uh, instruments, uh, like uh, software synthesizers, but all the stuff, you know, um, that you can control with MIDI. Um, and so that's that's what I did. And the main task, of course, was to program this and also to uh, program uh, the MIDI remote control. But I want to show you the results so that you know what we can now uh, do. Um, why is it important? Because, you know, as I said, I use mainly one software synthesizer, which is Pigments, um, and by Artoya. And the reason why I use this uh, Pigments here is because, you know, it's probably the most powerful and versatile synthesizer I've been using in the past mm, 40 years. <laughs> yeah, that's four zero. 40 years uh, that I've been using synthesizers. And, you know, I, I actually bought it. I paid for it. So it's not a commercial, okay? I really believe what I'm saying here. It's, it's very powerful. You know, it's not only a wavetable uh, synthesizer, just like other popular uh, synthesizers like Serum, for instance, which is a pretty good synthesizer. But it's all just, you know, it's just a wavetable synthesizer. This one is not only using wavetables, but you can also use samples that you, you know, uh, introduce by yourself or you use uh, sample libraries or whatever. Uh, but it can also do virtual analog synthesis, you know. Um, for instance, I was able to do my own mini Moog just using a pigments, uh, <laughs> you know, and rebuilding a mini Moog with pigments. Um, it does granular synthesis, additive synthesis, um, and of course, a subtractive synthesis. It has fantastic built-in uh, sequencer and very carefully designed send and insert effects, uh, filters, and modulations. Uh, you know, modulation. You can basically modulate anything you want with anything. Uh, so that's extremely powerful. So as you could guess, I you know I kind of like this synthesizer, and I'm using it all the time. And here, for instance, in this project, I have 16 instances of it, and each of them has a different sound, of course, assigned to them. But anyway, uh, 
What I wanted to do, as I said, is, is to be able to tweak and control most used parameters of the, of the synthesizer with real physical knobs and buttons. And now, well, I can do it. You know, that's the, the, the good news. And hopefully it's a good news for you too. Uh, and with that, I can, for instance, as you maybe you have noticed, when I push this button here, not only it opened the, the, the track, the corresponding track, the first track, which is this, uh, this uh, track here, but also it opened the, um, the, the, the instrument which is attached to it. And if I click to the second one here, it will do the same with the second instrument, you know, and third one and fourth, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. And I have two banks of this, so that makes 16 different synthesizers with different sounds. Um, and of course, I, I could do more if I wanted to. So this is great. You know, this is one of the things I wanted to do. And for that, I mean, this is not too complicated. This is it's pretty easy to do. You use macros in the in the uh, in Cubase. Actually, you you probably don't need Max to do that. But uh, when you want to do more than that, then well, you need something like Max uh, software, the, the the programming language. And uh, for instance, if you want to have access to the Focus uh, Quick Controls, you know, these are the the quick control that you, for instance, in my case, I assigned to this particular version of, of pigments. Um, and the, the first one will be the macro one, which is this button. The second one will be macro two, which is this button, etc. And what I did is that when I hit this uh, inst button here, uh, it will actually show focus con uh, quick control here. Uh, using the LED display, but also will show you, you know, focus, quick control, one, two, three, etc., eight. And so now, if I move, um, for instance, the first uh, knob here, it will actually move this uh, button. I mean, this this macro button here. Of course, if I use the next one, it will move the next one, etc. Three, four. Um, Let's see, this one is a filter cutoff, you see? So if I move the fifth one here, uh, it will actually change the cutoff frequency, etc., etc. So that's using the focus quick control, and you have eight of them. But I wanted more than that. I wanted to really be able to uh, drive and, and uh, uh, set up all the parameters here and, and tweak them using physical knobs. So... Uh, what I did is, you see, this is I, I made this blink just to tell me I was in in focus quick control uh, here, but now I can also touch this button here, and now I have access to a new bank of parameters called which I call generic parameters, and here you have what they mean. For instance, the first one is coarse, and that means with that button now I, I'm able not to to you know, uh, drive the, the quick control, but instead I'm, I'm controlling this coarse knob here, okay? And the same is true for all the eight parameters which are there. But not only that, but I can also, using this button here, because that's the way I, I wanted it, uh, change the bank. And now I have access to the VCA and the glide uh, feature. Uh, here I have access to different parameters which are shown here. Uh, regarding the envelopes, uh, here the LFOs. Uh, well, let, let's let me show you. Um, for instance, here it says LFO wave. So that means if I touch this first knob again, now uh, on the LFO one, I will actually change uh, the waveform here. See by just turning here my with my fingers. Okay turning this uh, button here. And I can do the same for the frequency, for instance, faster, you know, like this, or slower, like that. Okay, and that's the third button I use here. And it tells me what it is, you know, which is great. And I have like this, you know, 17 different uh, banks, you know, engine one, analog source, engine two, analog source, wavetable, one and two, sample, actually two pages per sample, uh, engine, um, et cetera, et cetera, additive. Uh, it's fantastic. Utility engine, which is the th third engine of this syn marvelous synthesizer. Oh, and by the way, not only I can, you know, 
for each of these bank and can have special functions for all these knobs here. But I can also use, and again, because I chose it and by programming with uh, Max, I was able to uh, assign button here. For instance, the first one here will be engine one. So if I, if I push it, it will switch you know, on and off. It will toggle basically the first engine. Same here for engine two, et cetera, et cetera. So I have also access to a bunch of buttons. And again, uh, for each bank here, I, I can assign uh, new f functionalities, new features to each of these buttons. So it's, it's quite powerful. Um, and this is really what I've been waiting for for a very, very long time. Um, okay, so that, that's it. You know, I don't want to make a, too long a video. Um, if you want to hear the actual results or if you want more technical details, let me know and I will make one or two more videos to explain in more details what I did and give you access to the files, the settings that I made and used, you know, <laughs> for free, of course. Um, if you're interested, uh, it's a good start if you want to achieve the same thing. Probably you will want to modify because we all have our own uh, workflows. But at least, you know, what I wanted to do with this video is to let you know that it's now feasible. And that's very good news. Well, at least to me it is, and I hope it's, it is for you as well. Okay, take care, have fun making music.